Our first question is from Randy, and Randy says, a lot of people talk about losing weight, but weight can come down through losing water, which is true, a uh, good sauna, uh, losing muscle, uh, certainly there's a number of diseases that can do that. How does a person lose fat while maintaining weight? Uh, I wanna gain muscle weight and lose fat. Are there any specific techniques? Uh, this is, of course, the, the kind of the holy grail, the thing we all seek in, in, in the field. I've always been told, and I think there's some truth to this, that it's probably better to attack fat first and then worry about uh, lean body mass after. Uh, your question here, Randy, where you're trying to do both, now that's, that's tough. Well, a couple of things right away. I think you have to have your protein dialed in. Uh, when we were young, when I was young, we were told basically about one gram per kilogram. And when you add the numbers up, that's a lot of protein. Uh, and it's hard to do sometimes. Uh, I know that protein uh, is very satiating. And I've tried <laughs> multiple programs to do this. And it's very, it's very hard to shovel down that amount of protein but I think it's the most important thing. Uh, a couple of things pop up all the time nowadays. Uh, yes, I do think high rep squats uh, are an important thing you have to do. You have to do something to stimulate muscle mass. Uh, we we're having a conversation with one of my students earlier about uh, why the impact of the deadlift is so much. I still think the fact that it's such a tight uh, central nervous system hit. You know, if you look at homoculus man with those massive hands, you know, pulling deadlifts is not only a big strain on the system because of the load on deadlifts, but it's also a big strain because of the squeeze in the hands. Uh, therefore, I don't. I'm not a big fan of deadlifts as a as the key lift in a muscle building program. I think you have to nail your exercise almost perfectly. Uh, we had this conversation a few weeks ago about doing dips, chins, and high rep squats. Three exercises twice a week, but you really got to get the volume in on the squats. So it's difficult. And I guess you keep hearing me say that word over and over. It's difficult. It's difficult. To lose body fat, uh, okay, I think fasting works. I think, uh, obviously, caloric intervention of some kind, you got to take less calories, works. Um, I'm not sure that what we believe back in the day works as well. Those, those really difficult, you know, you know, sweat yourself to death, hard workouts. I think they work well in the short run, but they don't seem to work well uh, over time. So you've, you're asking to do the most difficult thing in, 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 our, in our little world at the same time. And this question comes up a lot. Uh, I think it does help to have an abbreviated program uh, to build lean body mass. As everything, it's going to work for a short amount of time. You could probably you could probably work out a program where you did, you know, some uh, heavy uh, military press, some heavy bench press, uh, some rows, uh, but it's going to have to be those staples and those basics that are going to get you for your goals. Again, dips, if you can do them, chins, if you can do them, squats, if you can do them. It's a tough question, Randy. Uh, and I know it's tough because this question has been around for a long time. Uh, in the Easy Strength Omni book, I discussed something called uh, easy hypertrophy, where you go in and you you really push the, the squat, you really push uh, the dips or the handstand push-up, and that's it. The squat and the handstand push-up, there's your workout. See you in a couple days, twice a week. If you're also trying to lose fat, I think you have to you have to have caloric intervention. But for your cardiovascular work, I think you really need to turn everything down. I haven't talked about one of the most important things yet, and I'll get to that in just a second. So, yes, <laughs> go for long walks. <laughs> fat, uh, Covert Bailey in his book, Fit or Fat, talked about it. If someone asked the question, what would you do if you woke up fat one day? And he said he would try to walk four to six hours every day. And I thought that was a good idea. He also uh, prescribed um, uh, 
a very, very low fat diet uh, with lots of vegetables and a lot of grains. Um, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, some of us are gonna really do well on Atkins, you know, more the low carb route. Other people can do better on the, you know, the vegetarian route. A lot of it is gonna be individual to you, Randy. One of the things I would like you to think about is what's worked for you in the past. When you were at, when you were at a place you liked the most in your life, what were you doing? Very often when I pose that question, people will say, well, and then all of a sudden they'll stop and they'll realize that, you know, when they were in the best shape of their lives, they had somebody else preparing their meals, they slept a lot, they slept in on weekends, and then they played a lot. So, <laughs> and of course, now comes the big hit that you're really going to have to address, sleep, Randy. You're going to have to get your sleep in. Sleep, uh, I, I push sleep a lot on this podcast. Um, I think you need to get off social media. You might have to turn off the television for a while. You probably have to do a lot more, uh, you know, read books in your in your study and stare out the window and write poetry kind of thing. Uh, you need to really turn the engines off when you're not doing your walks, your lifts. You need to sleep. You might have to practice meditation te uh, techniques to get yourself to sleep more. It's a tough combination, but I know this to be true. I think. If you get your nine hours of sleep in, plus naps if you can pull it off, if you can get your meditation in, if you can focus on vegetables, protein, and water, if you can get your walks in, and then if you decide to go brutally hard, high rep back squat workouts with a single upper body exercise or two, I'm, I'm fine for you to do more, uh, but handstand push-ups, dips, chins, something that kind of gives the grip uh, a, a break Again, the, the homunculus man, the, the neurological hit on this stuff. Because you want all your resources going into burning fat and um, uh, <laughs> building lean body mass. Doing things like sauna might help you with sleep. It certainly helps. I, I sauna now before I go to bed. I, I sauna at night to help me sleep. Uh, localized uh, I mean, like ice baths and things like that might help in the short term, but uh, I haven't really seen a lot of evidence that says, you know, long term it works. Certainly, you know, go into one of these spas that are very popular in the United States West, where they freeze the fat off with these big machines might work. Um, certainly, you know, increasing your blackberries, your blueberries, your raspberries, and your apples, so you get the polyphenols in you are gonna help. But if you don't lock down rest, you don't lock down protein, I would argue fiber in any way you can get it, uh, water, everything else is going to be tough. It's not the best answer, Randy, because you're asking to do the hardest thing there is, and a lot of people can't make it work. Uh, I suggest usually people lose body fat first and then chase the muscle mass. Randy, I hope that helped. Thank you. Uh, Austin asked a question, what do you feel is an appropriate volume for the snatch? It's a good question, and I'm going to stop. There's, it's a whole long uh, response after, but we tried this several times to to figure out this perfect thing, okay? And it's been tough. So trying to make easy strength work with the kettlebell snatch. Uh, originally, we thought you know you could do <laughs> way too much. Originally, we thought you'd go 100, 100 to 140 snatch reps a day. So if it's 100, that'd be 50 left, 50 right, just, just to, for clarification. Very quickly, we found out that that's way too much volume five days a week. So then we slid down to three days a week. So basically, if you will, three snatch tests a week. And we found that <laughs> wasn't the best idea either. Uh, for the RKC prep program, uh, I have you just snatch once a week with up to 300 reps. But on snatch volume... And this is a good, you know, like Steve Maxwell recently said, you know, the kettlebell snatch is injures people. And, and I know a lot of other people are kind of, you know, uh, getting away from it. I remember when uh, Kenneth Jay's book, Viking Warrior Conditioning, came out. And it became uh, kind of an internet sensation for the kettlebell people. And people were chasing huge numbers in the snatch. Let me cut to the chase and I'll summarize it for you real quick. Basically, just do, there was this test we had to do with the RKC, which didn't help any of us. Basically, every 15 seconds, you snatch seven times. So let me give you the workout. Uh, at, at the start of the minute, 
in 15 seconds, you snatch seven times with your left hand. Put the bell down, shake yourself out, prepare yourself, 15 seconds. At the bottom, at the 30 second mark, take the right hand, snatch seven times, rest 15. So it's a, uh, I use this, uh, the, the second hand, uh, the second hand on my uh, 101 Dalmatians clock in my weight room. Uh, so when it hits the 12, I snatch left hand for 15 seconds. I rest when it hits the three for 15 seconds. Right hand, seven reps. Uh, when it hits the six, <laughs> rest when it hits the nine, start again when it hits the 12. And I can, and I had people, uh, the first time I ever did it, we did it for 25 minutes at the RKC in San Jose. Uh, I, I remember the story well because someone came up with the idea and then at the at the 20 minute mark said to uh, let's do five more minutes for the chief and uh, Pavel I asked Pavel about it later on and he said I don't even know what they were thinking so at the end of three days in the hot sun snatching for 25 minutes is probably overkill so I say all that if you're gonna snatch three to five days a week the volume can be as low as just 40 that's not many that's 20 left 20 right so 10 10 10 10 that's not very much I'm not sure the snatch works great for a daily movement uh, your miles may vary I know that a lot of my friends were doing snatch three days a week when Viking warrior conditioning was so popular uh, a lot of the people aren't in the field anymore and so I do think there is a the snatch tends to have a pretty high lim uh, low limit on the number of times a week but i think you can get away with 40 eh, maybe 50 if you're going to do it five days a week it can swell up to maybe 80 to 100 if you do two to three days a week and if you do it like we do where it's just one day a week you can go up to 300 reps every couple of weeks and maintain that for a while so maybe uh on a tuesday this is pick tuesday for just because i picked it uh, week one, 200 snatches. Uh, week two, 100 snatches. Week three, 300 snatches. Do a couple weeks in a row with just 100 and then go back to that. Um, because those 300 and 200 days are brutally long and hard work. The three by 100 thing we do for the RKC snatch prep, it can take an hour, hour and a half for some people to do those three five minute tests. So. Now, of course, your mileage may vary, and it's a lot of work. Thank you so much.